Hi, this is Derek Mills, and you're listening to Business Minds Coffee Chat with Jay Shear. Welcome. I'm Jay Shear with Jay Shear Business Consulting. We build solid foundations for service-based businesses to grow and scale and achieve the results and success they deserve. And you've joined Business Minds Coffee Chat. Our past doesn't define our future. It may shape us, but it doesn't define who we can become. If there was one thing you could start doing today that could change everything for you, and allow you to become happier and true to yourself, would you do it? On this episode, you're going to learn an incredible turnaround story and how one man's wake-up call caused him to take drastic action that transformed his life and career. Our guest is a husband and father, a best-selling author, an internationally renowned speaker, award-winning film producer, business guru, expert in authentic leadership and authentic sales, and a wealth management expert who coaches and guides high net worth clients to grow their wealth. Please welcome the creator and power behind dailystandards.com and author of the 10 second philosophy, Derek Mills. Derek, so good to see you. Hi, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm grateful for you being here. Okay. So, Derek, you have a remarkable story, and I, I would love to start with a thumbnail sketch of that story. So yes. could you share with us a bit about your, your backstory and the journey that led you to the work that you do today? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, a, a sketch out of that would be that uh, my life, hither, hitherto, my main shift, which caused me to write the 10 second philosophy, my life had been less than ordinary, um, less than average, and that's what's been a bit kind. <laughs> so, um, you know, my background is my parents were immigrants. Uh, uh, to uh, the UK, um, grew up there as children and met and married here in the UK. Uh, they originated from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, one has to um, accept that they had a rather inauspicious start, um, not good earners, not well-educated, uh, just ordinary good folk trying to bring up what eventually became seven children. Uh, the challenge is, that Jay, is that um, my mother died when we were children. Um, my youngest uh, sibling was five. Our eldest was 17. I was 13 at the time. So it really meant a very difficult, what was already a tight financial position, became even tighter as my father had to give up work to a part of us to save us have to go, having to go down the welfare and being um, you know, put into what we call foster care. I'm not sure what we uh, call that in the States and elsewhere. Um, yeah, so that was that was the start. The challenge with that is I, I had I had a, a pretty bad stutter. I couldn't speak properly. Properly, I stammered, and huge drop in self confidence uh, occurred from my mother's death. I roll forward uh, 10, 15 years, and I'm still struggling. But but I'm self employed. I'm working in the financial services sector. Kind of kidding myself that even the way I spoke, which wasn't very well would cause people to lean in and listen. So I kind of had that kind of mind trick on myself. Didn't really help that much. <laughs> Sometimes it did, um, but it didn't help me in the business. I was struggling in business. And by the time I got to about 32, I was still struggling, but we were married with four children at 32. My wife and I, my wife is Jerry. So I'm sure you understand, Jay, that when you get to a place where you're working six and sometimes seven days a week, till late at night, and you still can't make ends meet. There's an inner frustration. There's an inner kind of self-loathing. I'm not good enough, and who am I anyway? And 
um, I don't deserve my wife, I don't deserve these people around me, and I'm just just worthless. So I had a real issue about feeling low, lack of self worth, lack of confidence, and um, and to, and to be frank, though I didn't get it diagnosed, I knew I was depressed, um, but you know, I was a man, I still am a man, uh, <laughs> and I decided just to just just to man up, you know, that old phrase to man up and get through it. Well, six years later, age 38. I'm still broke, still depressed, still robbing Peter to pay Paul um, and struggling with the months and not seeing my family. That phase in life where I was at the office but wanting to be at home and thinking about home and what the children are doing, what my wife Jerry's doing. But whenever I was at home, I wasn't there either. I was thinking about all the work and who do I need to see and what, what business can I get in and how are we going to get the cash flow so I can pay the bills at the end of the month? And it was kind of a, a, this kind of ex exquisite bind that I was stuck in, um, mm -hmm. effectively what, be what became almost 17 years. But during that time, I had been listening to the CDs. I'd been, um, I'd been on some goal planning workshops. I read the books and Tony Robbins and all the usual suspects and, uh, and, and even read Think and Grow Rich, but age 38, I was still mm -hmm. broken and depressed. Age 38, I had a moment, and that moment um, occurred because someone asked me a question. And because I was in a place where I was listening within, I was paying attention, and I kind of already knew there was more than this, even though I couldn't get more than this to show up in my life. So when, I had, when someone asked me a question, it was as if that was the trigger. That's what caused the 10-second moment behind the philosophy. And it was that moment that caused me to shift my philosophy, my thinking, my approach, my attitude. In a moment, I knew what was right and what was not working for me. And I, I made these changes. I began to live as my truth, authentic self. I set what, what we, what's now become to as daily standards. I set new standards for myself, both within and without, in business and life and health and every every of my life that hitherto I've been frustrated with. Um, and I stuck with these standards, I stuck with my truth long enough to see what would happen if I did. So what happened is that three years later, I'm, I'm in the same business. I'm a millionaire, but I'm now working part-time. Um, thereafter, I became uh, a senior partner, one of the UK's largest wealth management businesses. Um, people then said to me, how did you do that? And um, you were there, how did you go from there to there? And you know, and I know, they're really talking about the money. How did you go from the struggling guy to the multi-millionaire working part-time? How did you do that and have another business and become a coach and a mentor and a film producer and all these other things? And um, I used to kind of just have a joke at the time and say and something like, that's because I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was only, yeah, yeah. And that was only, as you know, Jay, that was only a, a part joke because I was a genius and I was a genius all of those 17 lean years that I didn't get myself to show up in my own life. I was always genius. How do I know that? Because you can't get water out of the glass unless it's in the glass. So if the genius kept coming out of me to do these amazing speaking, uh, coaching, mentoring, producing things, then that stuff must have been inside me all along. Therefore, I, I, I really uh, want to state this, that every one of us, everyone listening and watching today, is a genius. It's a question of what do we need to do to get the genius out of ourselves, into our lives and into the world, and the difference we can make in the world for ourselves and others. And that's the key to this. So what was the question that was asked of you that became the catalyst that changed it all? Yeah. It was a, it was a non-question. Uh, it was about um, about 9.30 in the evening, at, uh, right at the end of 2003. And the office um, security guard just came in and he just locked up the building. And he just looked at me uh, and said, no, no, time to lock up. And I said to him, just give me 10 more minutes. And uh, he walked away and I was kind of shuffling more bits of paper, trying to figure out my prospects and who would I call, who would I, how far would I have to go and drive to see someone to try and get some business. And he came back a few minutes later and I said, just give me two more minutes. He just looked at me and the question he asked me was, what time did you get in this morning? And I was kind of, um, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, and he walked away because it was now almost quarter to 10 in the evening. 
Mm. And I've been doing this, you know, getting out up at six, out at seven, office at eight, getting home well after 10, not for weeks, not for months, but for years, missing most of the life outside of the work that was struggling. So the one question, and I believe that we have to begin to at least be to wake up to the words, thoughts, questions, questions, phrases, and ideas that are around us all the time. And because I was seeking to wake up, I knew I was more, even though I couldn't get it to deliver, I knew I was more. So I was prepared for the question that on, that for most people in the world, that question would mean nothing at all, which is why part of the philosophy I share is we must begin right now, even during this conversation, to pay attention to the words, thoughts, questions, phrases, and ideas that come to us and through us and pay attention and act from that place. I did that and that's what caused the change. From that night, I made a decision to stop being the old way that wasn't serving me. I made a decision to to, to jettison or to let go of 90% of my clients who were kind of abusing my trust, abusing my service and running me ragged anyway. And I kept 16 clients and started from that point. I made a decision in that moment to be my truth. I made a decision to live from daily standards, to go within and say, what's the right way for me to live? What's the right way for me to be? And I call the daily standards a basis, a criterion, a level, a quality or a rule that you set from within. Mm. And I didn't know this. I want to share this with the audience is that I didn't know any of this. <laughs> it just came to me in a moment of, clarity, confusion, as in what's going on, because this is at odds with what I've been doing all these years. Right. Instead of setting goals for the future and saying, when I get the goal, I'll be happy. What's coming through for me? So hold on a second. You've been setting goals for years, 17 years, Derek, and you're still broken, depressed. Stop setting more goals and instead go within, live from your truth and set daily standards for how you be, for how you are, for how you exist, for what you accept, what you don't accept set standards from your truth and live from that place and what what i what i didn't know is that the more i did that the more of the gifts that were inside of me would begin to flow into my world i know there's a lot there but and it needs unpacking but that is what the question caused in that 10 second moment what, what a what an what an incredible realization at that point that stops you in your tracks and gives pause to truly think through and be able to create those daily standards and change the trajectory of, of your life. I, you know, I would think it, you spent years and years listening and reading, you know, self self development. And you mentioned Tony Robbins and all the other work that you didn't that you did but it didn't necessarily connect or make change for you, but it was in you, right? You absorbed all that information. Do you, do you feel that all of that prior work that you had done allowed you to take that next step and be able to change your life with that one question? I'm sure that what, what it did was... Um prepare the soil. You know, when you plant a uh, seed, you get a sunflower seed and you put it in the drawer in a packet in the kitchen. And for years, nothing happens. It's still a sunflower seed, but nothing happens when it's in the drawer. And then we take it out of the packet. We take it out of the drawer. We prepare some soil. We add nutrients to the soil. We put the seed in. We add water to the soil. And we put a, a support mechanism in there for when it begins to grow so it can cling on to something as it comes out of the ground. And what that makes me consider is that the seed already knew what it, what it was. It knew what it would articulate and particularize. It knew what it would become. It knew what it had inside of it. But it doesn't begin to share that with the world and become that until the circumstances were right. So what I discovered is that the answer to your question is that, yes, those things helped. But I had to do something really, really specific and accept a challenge to my other uh, previous um, systems and some of the beliefs that I had before 
and do something really specific and put the seed in the soil, nurture it in the right way and be patient when nothing was happening for quite some time, where it wasn't shelling its shell. It wasn't breaking through the soil as we patient long enough. So all that stuff helps. You need the soil, you need the sun, you need the water, you need the nutrients, we need support mechanisms. But we do need to plant the seed and activate ourselves to make all of that be valuable. Well, Derek, I can I, I know that so many of those that are either watching or listening to this can relate to that story that invest in reading that invest in CDs and podcasts and so forth and are looking for the answer that are looking for some help that are looking for someone or some message that can help pull the greatness out of themselves. And, you know, many times we see individuals that are going from course to course, book to book, but they don't necessarily take the appropriate actions. Yeah. And so I, I can hear through your story that this will definitely resonate with, 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 our, with our audience because it's something that so many of us want. Yeah. And so, so talk to us then about the 10 second philosophy and how does that help us create change? Okay. So let's, let's start at the core of this and then work outwards because the core to the 10 second philosophy and the core to using daily standards to achieve success and to help you to achieve your goals is, is truth. It's the truth. We have to be prepared to go to our truth. And the truth is you are far more. I am far more. We are far more than we think or, or see or feel we are right now. There's far more to us. There's a huge amount to every individual listening and watching right, right now. And what we have to accept, as difficult as it may be, if you're you know, living out on, and you're, you're struggling to pay your bills and you're dumpster diving and, and you think nobody loves you and you're not feeling great and you're not seeing the value and you're walking with your head down and, and you've got issues and bills and debts, you need to know that that is nothing more than a set of circumstances. But in fact, at the core of that is your truth. And here is the truth. You're an absolute genius. And you came into this world 10 out of 10. I have a faith. And I believe that God created every one of us 10 out of 10. As in, you know what I mean by that, Jay? T a 10 out on a, on a scale? Yeah, you're a 10. We're all 10s. But what happens in our lives is that we, we end up turning up in life um, and showing up in our own lives as a three or as a four and accepting the world treating us as a three, as a four. Remember, we're born at 10, mm. but we're accepting the world treating us as a three. There's a real problem with that, because if the world sees you as a three, and you act like a three, or you act like a four, and you show up like a four, and you speak like a four, guess what? The world will see you where you set the standard. Now, that standard you set is not your truth, because you were born at 10. You were absolutely born at 10. You have everything within you. You came into the world. You had your starter pack to make you a 10. And if you don't want to use that starter back, you show up as a seven or five or four or three. And the challenge is what you want in life doesn't often occur when you're playing at three or four out of 10. So it's really around how you view yourself inside, how you position yourself inside, how you speak, how you act, how you show up in the world. Because if let's say you want to, in your business or your life or your relationships or your friendships or your engagements or your impact, that you want to deal with sevens. There's a real problem. Sevens don't deal with threes. Mm. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that that's the way it is. So what do we do? We have to show up as a seven. Remember, we're born ten. Remember the, the starting truth. We're born as tens. We have to show up as a seven. And now the sevens go, oh, yeah, I see you now. I see you. And then you get to a place where you can then do business with these people, have relationships, have engagements, have friendships, because it's just how it is. It's, it's an, almost like an unconscious 
a thing where if you show up as a three or four, why on earth would a world treat you as a seven, eight or nine? Why would it? So we have to raise our inner standards, to go back to our truth. I'm a 10. It's not an arrogant thing, just saying I'm a 10. Well, that's a fact. So what do I have to do to let stuff go to get to my truth and act from that place? So when we, the, the second part is when you accept that you're a 10, and that's the truth, because you are. It's not, like, it's not a method. It's not something of, of um, just made up. You're a 10. So what we now have to do is, okay, now I know I'm a 10. How do I shift myself incrementally is part of the answer. So that as I raise my standards of how I treat myself, how I speak, my inner voice, my health, my relationship, the food I eat, the people I'm around, people I associate with, my finances, my time, my energy, my career. You raise those standards consciously, maybe for the first time. All the time, as you raise your standards, you stick to the point. My truth is I'm a 10 out of 10. What do I need to let go of? What do I need to do to get my 10 to show up in my life? Stick to the truth. So when we start looking at our daily standards, and you can set daily standards you know, the new rules and new criteria, a new basis, a new level um, in any part of your life, the health, the food, the relationships, your friendships, your finances, your career, your time, your money, anything at all. You can do this in life. And there's another model where you look at your business standards as well, and you can shift these things. Because in both areas, the, the chances are that when you have these personal standards, you've had them for a very long time in your life, and you've accepted you at that level but you forgot that you were a 10. Mm. And if you're doing these things and eating this kind of food and, and not training and associating with these kinds of people that are not really helping you and they're bringing you down. And I think as, um, I don't remember which philosophy is, philosopher said it, but you know, pay attention to your friends. What have they got you doing? What have they got you saying? Where have they got you going? My, my dad, you know, the uneducated um, Jamaican immigrant to the UK, I brought up seven kids. He just said something really simple about your friendship standards. He said, Derek, or whichever one of us you were speaking to at the time, he'd say, Derek, drop the bad company. Hmm. And then he'd say, you must keep good company. Because even as a guy that was uneducated and worked in a factory all of his life uh, with no academic qualifications, he knew that part of who we become is linked to who we associate, associate with. So we set the standards. We need to let people go that are not serving us and not honoring us. And if they're not allowing us to honor and serve others, we need to really have a good review of those people. And so that's in the personal, your finances, your health, your approach, your mindset. It's doing a root and branch review of the areas of your personal life. And there's a model for that, which you know about. And there's a model where you do a root and branch review and decide some of those need shifting. And part of that review is to consider where did they come from? And who gave you that? Okay, that was great when you were 22, but you're 42 now. That was serving you back then. Is that serving you now? And then same in the business. Well, we, we've always done it this way. We've always had anyone can do business. What, any order? Any order size? Well, what, when did you start that standard? Oh, the founder started that standard. Or when I started the business, I agreed that we'd have any kind of client. Well, that was serving you then. Right now, it's causing you 80% of your hassles. So when you raise the standard, who can become a client? You know, you, you, you're not a... You're not a uh, a convenience store where anyone can walk in. You can decide who you serve and how you serve. You can decide who comes across the threshold and what the thresholds are. So let me give you a quick example. Is that, um, I went inside to my truth. I had to go in and say, I realized that I was driving all over the country. I was working until late evenings, working weekends, trying to do the best I could for people. But ultimately, in financial services, people tended to see me when they wanted to see me and do transactions and small transactions of that. When I went to my trip, I realized I'm, I'm one of the good guys. I'm honest, I have integrity, I'll do the best to serve people, but they're not seeing that. So I need to let go of this 90%. I also said no more working weekends as one of my new standards, as a rule. So I'm not seeing my wife and my children at the weekends. No more working evenings. If my, if my clients are home with their family uh, uh, and, and children, I need to be home with my family and children. No more working weekends. In fact, I went from doing six, seven days a week to three and a half days a week. And to the point where I could even, I'd even say to my clients and prospective clients, these are the days I will see you. These days. I set brand new standards. Rather than any time, any place anywhere, these days and these times. 
And when I notice, as I set these new standards and the minimum order has to be, your minimum income to become a client of mine has to be, your minimum investment has to be, and you come to the office to see me, another rule that I set up, basis, criterion, level, quality or rule. And I set these new criteria and you said, I don't care about the past, I'm already failing. I'm gonna set these new daily standards from my truth and stick with them long enough to see what would happen if I did. And what happened was people saw me in a different way. Bigger, clients with bigger checks began to say, I see you now, can you do this for me? Clients began to give me introductions to wealthier and wealthier clients. And they would come to the office, they'd be driving around the country. I worked three and a half days a week. Um, my the before and after picture, income isn't the only criteria, but we're, we're all in business listening to this conversation. As you're sipping, the co sipping your coffee, notice how you feel about this. I went from working six, seven days a week to going and working three and a half days a week with my new standards and my new truth. My income went up 10 times. That's so powerful and it's so profound. The, that is a, the, the self-assessment piece really trying to understand and get to your truth and asking yourself very difficult and tough questions. That's not an easy process. Many times we try to avoid the, those difficult types of conversations, but you know, Derek, we all have to look in the mirror every day and I love your, I love your uh, ability to look at the, we, we start off as a, as a 10, clearly, but through circumstances, through the, the way we're raised, through biases that we carry, through storylines that we tell ourselves, that number just continues to go lower and lower and being able to recognize that the way that you've been able to articulate it and ask someone to go through this process is I, I can definitely see where that would be life-changing. Yeah. Jay, you know what it is? I also had a lucky advantage um, when I started and it's not, it's not a silver spoon or anything like that. Um, life was horrible. I wasn't enjoying my life. I was in a, as in, I'd had enough. And sometimes for some of us, it takes us getting to the place where we just had enough before we would we'll change something. But I, I've had enough of this. And then we make those changes. Sometimes it can be a feather that tips the scales, but we haven't all got to act in that, in that way. That was my story. But for, for others, maybe the same kind of story. You know, just what have you had enough of? Whichever your life, business, health, family, relationships, uh, are you unhappy with or frustrated with? And then start the inner question to the truth and say, okay, what can I do around this? How can I shift my standards of acceptance, self-acceptance, yes, but also how I portray and project myself in the world? Am I projecting from my truth? Or as you absolutely superbly put, no, from all the conditioning over the years. I'm, I'm, I'm projecting as a three because, Jay, if you knew my story, you'd be a three as well. If you knew what I'd gone through, what I'd heard and what had happened to me and all these things and my education my, or my lack thereof and my poor sales, well, you know what? You can't escape the fact you were born perfect. You were born a 10. Mm. So it's about getting to your truth first and then doing a view of the areas of your life that most frustrate you and then moving that forward. This piece can't change. You can't shortcut it. You've got to say, I've had enough of the old way, or I realize there's more to me than has shown up up to this moment. And I'd love to explore what I could be. And what I'm saying could be, you already it, by the way. <laughs> it just isn't showing up yet. So what if I love to, what, what, what could I be? And there's a bit of a, a challenge here for some people where what we need to begin to do is, is get a pen and get a pen and a journal, and and get a um, or a bit of paper or get your iPad or whatever you've got your device out, 
and begin to really be creative around what you, and this is about your imagination, not your goals. Okay. It's using your imagination and actually begin to scope out the incredible things that you currently think you could do, would like to do, or interested in, and then times them by 10. So if I want to get out of debt and have a hundred thousand pounds, you know, net worth. Time that by 10. I want to be able to help a few people and do a bit of counseling at the local church because I want to help people locally. Times that by 10 and maximize it. And even when you do that, the reality that shows up for you, if you stick with this long enough to see what would happen if you did, will be beyond what you wrote down. So I'm going to share a bit of a, a, a controversial part of my okay. um, approach. That is that I've been setting goals, literally done the Tony Robbins goal setting work program and other ones. And um, at 38, I was still broken, depressed, still robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm. But I realized at that point, there were a couple of things happening with the goals mechanism that most people use. I accept that almost all the world that, that is into personal development and business development, we set goals and targets for ourselves. Let me just share, I believe, a, a different side of, of that. If we're in the world as a three and we set goals, no matter how big they are, we're going to set three goals. Does that make sense? We're going to set goals as a three, but you're a 10. So could it be, just a question to ask, could it be that by setting goals from a three that you're limiting yourself? Yes. Could it be the very goals that you set for yourself are limiting you? Just to, just to play with that for a while. Don't take my word for it now, but just you know, meditate on that. Could it be that the goals you're setting for yourself are limiting you because you're setting them from a three or a four or a five? Because in reality, you're a 10. Yeah. So if that's the case, when I was when I was setting goals for, the, for those 17 years, I didn't set anything down as a goal compared to what my life is right now. As in, it wouldn't have even come to me to consider thinking ba about entertaining or writing anything like my life right now because I didn't even know I was interested in those things. That I could do those things. I, I literally didn't, I didn't know. So. Given my background, my parents were immigrants to the UK from Jamaica, uh, had a stutter until my um, early 30s, financially broke, haven't got a degree. Um, why would I, how could I set a goal to say, I'll be invited to the, to the American um, uh, US embassy, that's fact, to the, to the State Department in America, because one of my best friends was a former American, American special um, uh, ambassador. How would you write down that I'll be invited to Buckingham Palace with a lot of other dignitaries to celebrate a Christmas party? How would you write down that one day I'd have my own polo team, the type with horses rather than water, and be playing polo? Because of that, when I was young and broken, 32 and 38, I couldn't even ride a horse. How would you, how would you write down that you, you're going to be an international speaker or have amazing friends in the most, and, and, and become a Christian that you didn't expect to become a Christian and have a real faith and relationship with God. How would you write that down as a goal or a plan when you didn't even know it was inside you? How do you write down that which you don't know? And that's what I want to just you to play with. And how do you play with that? Well, you start by going inside and saying, okay, let's say, let's suppose that Derek's only part right. Okay, I may not be a four, it's probably like, maybe not a four, maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a, I'm a seven or an eight, okay. So start look, reviewing your life in the seven key areas and, and begin to just, from your truth, what could you be? What might that look like? How, look, look at your personal health and, uh, and, 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 and fitness. Look at your environment, that means your inner environment, your what do you say when you speak to yourself? What's, what's the standard of your language in your self-talk? And you do you realize you can adjust that over weeks and months and years? Or you can just do it immediately. What about your relationships? Now, as my father said, you know, drop the bad company and keep the good company. Now, what, what are your friends like? What about your family? Are you taking children to school in the morning? Are you picking them up two, three times? Are you there for every cycle or for their soccer game? What are you doing? What's your standard in these areas? What's the, what's the conversation at the dinner table with your husband, wife, and children? 
Is it just what's on TV? Is it about, is it about life? Is it about the deep stuff? And uh, what are you listening to in the car as you're journeying to the office and back? Okay, it's the radio, you know, WKRP in Cincinnati. What are you listening to? Why well, I, I listen to where that came from, just came to me. <laughs> or are you, are you listening to um, philosophy and business and entrepreneurship and the world's greatest speeches? And what are you listening to? Because if you do that for a few years and you're in the car, in the car for a couple of hours a day, well, you've done a university worth of work there. So true. Not just music, but you've, you've done something. And if you think you're not learning it because the kids are in the car or there's somebody honking their horn, it's going in unconsciously and you retain a lot of that. And we know that because you don't learn songs, but we know that we know all the words 30 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it went in unconsciously. I'm just trying to say to, to begin to play with this stuff. I can't convince you in one conversation here with Jay and I to say this could change everything because it can change you. But actually, that's the truth. Yeah, so look I, at the I, areas of your family, your emotions, your career, and your time and money, and, and change your standards. And just the only thing I'd ask you to commit to is to stick to those new standards long enough to see what would happen if you did. And the final part of that, because I want to close the loop on this, is yeah. say that you've got a challenge with setting goals, is that all of us, you, me, Jane, every listener to this conversation, we set goals and we attach happiness to the achievement of those goals. I know that, spoken on four continents, never met or coached or spoken for a single person that sets a goal to be unhappy. So everyone sets a goal with an attachment of happiness to it. Two challenges with that. It's just to get people to think and to consider how the philosophy came out, because it's within all of us. The first challenge is that most goals, most goals aren't achieved. We did research in 2012 with Les Loud PR, and it found it in North America, in fact, but most people um, don't achieve their goals most of their life. That's most people, but it's the same around the world. Most people don't wow. achieve their goals. So if you don't achieve the goal that you attach happiness to, you know what's coming, don't you? What happened to the happiness? <laughs> I want to, Derek, no, when I'm going to get this weight and this income, this much money, this promotion, this house, this person in my life, then I'll be happy. Okay. But if you don't achieve that, what happened to the happiness? What they're really saying is, Derek, don't you dare get me to be happy right now. Not until I've got that. Don't you dare ask me to be happy until I'm a millionaire, a millionaire-esque, I've got a house, a place in there, I'm doing this job, and I've got a, a, follow, I've got a million followers, then I'll be happy. So what's re- what you're really doing there, you're taking happiness from today, and you're reserving it for a future that may never occur. Because if most people miss most of their goals in most parts of the world, you attach happiness, you're fracturing, you're taking happiness from your now, and you're pushing your time to a place that never occurs. And here's why. Happiness is a now experience. Hmm. Happiness is a now experience. We can only be happy in the now. Everything else is an illusion. It might never happen. Amazing. I, you know, you talk about happiness and that we, you know, we're, we're, seems like we're, we're chasing that and to accentuate your point when we are setting goals for ourselves so often it's attached to external things and we also attach our self-worth to that so when we when or if we don't achieve those goals that we think are going to make us happy whether it's money material things and so forth not only does it impact our happiness but also we look at ourselves as a failure yeah. which leads to unhappiness i mean it, it is i know this is uh, it's got to be i know it's controversial when i had my 10 second moments i was thinking what's this stuff because i've been told you know set goals you want to be successful set goals anywhere in the world ask anyone i tell you do that set goals and i would say to the, i say to audiences i say and how's that working out for you <laughs> just ask the question how's that working out for you? then you get a bit of ooh, well, um, it's kind of, well, come on, how's it working out for you? Yes, it's working in some areas. And for some people, it works incredibly well. For most people, you see, I'm, I'm a trier, I'm a, I'm a doer, I'm, a, I'm an active person. After 17 years, I haven't anywhere near even the low, the low level fruits of goals that I'd set for myself. I realized I had to go back to my truth and start with something else. Start with my truth. I'm a 10, I'm a great guy, I'm a genius. 
I don't, I don't know what my gifts are yet, but I know I've got some. What, what if that was a new belief for me? What if you could just pretend, you pretend all the other stuff, all the negative stuff about yourself? We all do that, you know? So what if you began to pretend some of the good stuff? And that's some new beliefs that said, actually, I'm a 10. I'll accept that. <laughs> yeah, I'm born a 10. How could I not be? Justify that. How could I not be? So the, there must be stuff inside me that hasn't come out yet. So set daily standards from your tree. And the beauty of this will be that the daily standards that you live by will help keep you in your truth. And the longer you stay in your truth, the more your gifts begin to flow into your life. The longer you stay in your truth, the more, the more your gifts that you don't even know about yet will begin to flow into your life. And that's where uh, the, the shift occurred for me, sticking to my truth, setting daily standards from that place, sticking with it long enough, See what happened if I did, and then my gifts, gifts I hadn't even thought about or wouldn't believe I could do, began to flow. And that's how I became, got to produce films and do all types of stuff and coach people. And now I'm a former stutterer. How does a former stutterer set a goal to become an international speaker? Well, the thing is, you probably don't, but here's what you can do. You can look inside of you and just begin to live from that place one day at a time. Begin to live from that place. And if the good Lord gives you tomorrow morning for that day, one day at a time, live from that place. I know all the listeners here are in business and you think you're maybe a bit a bit woo-woo, a bit fluffy, a bit whatever. I know what it doesn't matter what you think <laughs> about what I'm saying right now. It still works. You may not believe in gravity, but gravity works on you whether you believe it or not. What I'm sharing with you is that is what if you what if you did and began to live in that place? These are, I'm not saying to set goals. I'm not even telling you to set daily standards for it for three weeks. And I always people say to set goals. They say you set your goals for the week, the month, the end of year target, the three year, the four year business plan, the 20 year vision. I'm saying no. Just set daily standards and live from your truth just for today. Just until you put your head back on your pillow tonight. Set and live by daily standards from your truth. Stick to your true self and allow whatever comes out for you for that. And if the good Lord gives you tomorrow, stick to your truth and standard just for that day. This is a one day at a time thing, not a 20 year program or a three year course you might do. You know, even the Lord's Prayer. In the middle of the Lord's Prayer, what, 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 is, what does Christ say when he taught the disciples the Lord's Prayer? He said, Give us this day. Give us this day. He didn't say, Give us this month or this quarter or this three-year business plan, or this 20-year program. Hmm. No, it's it's uh, it's to give us this day. And I think I think he meant what he said, and he said what he meant. It's about the day. It's about being your truth today. It's about loving today. It's about acting from that place, having faith today, making a difference today. Say those words today. Raise your standards today. Be all you can be. Love today. And that's what it's about. And, the, and, and uh, like I say, in, even further in Scripture, it says something along the lines of, and have no worry for tomorrow. Because in one translation it says, tomorrow will have worries of its own. Or another one says, tomorrow will take, will have, will t- will take care of itself. So we're having a reinforcement of, no, it's about today. We're not saying to forget tomorrow. We're saying, create the greatest tomorrows by living from your truth and the right daily standards from your truth mm. today. I love it. You're... Uh... You're, you're definitely speaking my language. And something else about your story that I believe is an important point to make, and that is around that your circumstances don't necessarily define who you can become. And we can change the story we can reframe the story we can come out of the most challenging and most difficult of circumstances and you've shown that that's possible there are many other examples out there of the endless possibilities of being able to change and reach that get back to that level 10 genius that you are so i i I love the story I want to switch gears for a moment and I want to talk about oh I want to talk about your involvement in the the film that is tied to the Napoleon Hill book. So 
Could you share with us how you got involved in that project? And also, because you mentioned that you had read the book many years prior, but how did that book impact your life? And speak to the movie aspect for a moment as well, please. Uh, just in, in brief, um, once I became uh, a speaker, it was on my fifth ever talk that someone, someone was in the audience that said um, your thing around being your true self, living from your truth and, and the 10 second philosophy of daily standards. She said, well, where did that come from? I said, well, it came from me. I just realized that this is what's inside of me. She said, I, I know someone that we're, we're really like that. They're doing one of these motivational films. So I, I got then introduced uh, to producer of a small of a film. Um, and I did my bit, did my three minute cameo with Dr. John Gray, you know, from um, Men Are From Mars and uh, Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup For The Soul, uh, Maestro. I had a three minute cameo in, in their film. But actually it was the director of photography that six years later, after my time, time in cameo, got in touch with me and said, I love that thing you put in the film about daily standards of the future. We think that would be really useful. I'm working with the Think and Grow Rich Foundation, the Napoleon Hill Foundation, making a film of the book. We're wondering, would you be, would you, would it be okay if you were to, he didn't finish his sentence. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so, um, we'd like to, would you, would like to be in the film, Think and Grow Rich, who think that your story and what you're sharing will help people to engage with Think and Grow Rich more and to make it more useful and useful. And I just clearly, I said yes to that. And, um, but you, Jay, if I could explain the, the honor that I felt and still feel because of that, is when you have a book in your 20s that you read and you see these characters and these people and you hear their stories and what they've done and the lessons from them, to then have, you know, 25 years later, someone say to you, yeah, we're making that into a film now. We think your story should be added to it. So you couldn't write that down as a goal, <laughs> I don't think. But what's more important it is testimony to living from our truth. So when we live from our truth, we can only do so much. But other people will see us and they'll go, oh, we recognize Derek Mills and his story in Daily Standards. Think and Grow Rich is a brand. It's, it's like a 10 as far as brands go. We, are, we want him to be a 10 in the film. This is just a metaphor within, it, within a metaphor. It's to say, well, I didn't make that happen. I didn't call and push and ask something, but it came to me quite simply. There's so much more that come to each of us. But the honor of being in that film with some amazing, brilliant minds um, and, and, and teachers and today's you know, preeminent coaches, um, I still kind of every now and again pinch myself to say, wow, how did that happen? But, but that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that, that kind of stuff can happen to an ordinary guy from Birmingham, England, who can end up being in, in, the great, in, the, in a film of the greatest brand of all time when it comes to personal development? After the Bible, of course. Yeah, I'm not sure that answered the question, but that's the background to that. And it really is around what I shared was daily standards. See, what I shared was daily standards are the key to achieving your goals. Goals don't achieve goals. Goals don't get goals. It's how you be each day that determines whether you succeed or fail in your goals. If you, if you set goals and you fail at them, look at your daily standards. If you set goals and achieve them, look at your daily standards. Goals don't achieve goals. It's as if to say your daily standards are the steps, the stepping stones to the achievement of, of your goal. Goals don't achieve goals. They never have. It's how you be. It's how you do. It's how you are. The daily standards that you run that determines whether you achieve the goal or not. I remember when, when the 10 second philosophy book um, first came out, I was doing a a reading um, in a bookstore, and there was a young girl at the, at the back, and we we were having a conversation and a Q and A, and I was just um, talking about uh, this thing, and she said, "Well, it's interesting that everyone, she I think she's twelve or fourteen, everyone seemed to set goals." She said, and then they most of them they don't achieve, and even the ones that they do get, they then get another one, 
And how come they never seem to be happy? They just get another goal and another goal. And I say, I know. See, most people that are doing that, going down that path, this is a 12-year-old kid, by a 40-year-old kid, going down that path, um, are not aware they, that they have so many more gifts inside of them. And if they live by standards from set from inside, they'll achieve more goals than they could have written down. So I said to the audience, I said, um, let's suppose you've got a, you know, a 12-year-old child. Then you say to that child, I want to, I want to be able to bench press 250. I want, I want to be able to run a mile in six minutes. And I want to have 10% body fat. So you, you go to this 12-year-old child and, and you say to her, coach me. And the child turns to you and says, okay, so let me ask some questions. What do you eat? Well, I eat, I eat most things that are deep fried, lots of sugar. Well, how do you move? Well, I don't really move. I land the catch when I get home. I use the remote control. No, nope, I'm active with my no nope, remote control arm. And um, and, you, and the, you describe your life. And they go, hold on a second. If, the, if that's what you do each day, if that's the basis, the criteria, the quality, the rules, if that's what you do each day, I'm sorry, mister, there's not a month, in, not in a month of Sundays that you're going to achieve that goal if these are your daily standards. I'm telling you, a 12-year-old could do that for you. You could get a 12-year-old coach, tell them your goals, and ask them to ask you what you do each day, and how you do you each day, and who you interact with each day, and who your friends are, and what you eat, and who your customers are, and they'll tell you whether you're going to achieve those goals or not. So, really, the 12-year-old child is within each of us. It's for us to turn to the 12-year-old child and ask those questions. Let's go back to you, true. If those standards are not going to hit the spot, let them go. Raise them, change them, and stick to your new standards long enough to see what happen, what would happen if you did. Love it. Derek, what are you removing from your life today to create an even more fulfilled life for yourself? What an awesome question. One of the things I, I do surprises most people, because you know, I work as a wealth manager for one of the UK's largest um, wealth managers, well, FTSE 100 company. Um, it's one of the hundred largest businesses in the UK by the stock market valuation. Um, but I do it part time because <laughs> I, I don't want to do it full time. I love people and it's people, people business, not a money business. But I want to spend two, two and a half days a week working with people, talking to them, coaching them, helping them, waking up people that may wake up people that may wake up people that change everything for all of us. On a Saturday, most Saturdays, I volunteer in a coffee shop. You know, but it's, it's into our church, and I take my Saturdays, and I get my apron on, and I serve people. Now, Jim, you know I'm not just serving coffee. Yeah? <laughs> I'm serving love and engagement, mm. and just sometimes just connection, and just being there. When you, There's something cathartic and blessed about just serving people and being there for them. You know, they go to other coffee shops, and they just get a cup of coffee. When they come to Just Love at Clementine's, which is the coffee top coffee shop, um, I volunteer in with lots of members of our church and my wife. We volunteer there. It's a charity, obviously. And I go there because I want to serve people. When you come to Just Love at Clementine's, you get more than coffee. You get love. You get engagement. You get recognition. We want to see you, as in see you, and talk to you, and learn from you, and share stuff. Sometimes, to nothing more than listen. Beautiful. That's what I do. Mm. So I, I don't do financial services for even five days a week. I won't. It will make, it'll make me a few more zeros. <laughs> but that's not what I came here for. That's as in, I didn't come here into the world to just suddenly get to this place and then make a few more zeros. I came here to serve. And to the degree that we serve from our truth, the world, and in my faith, you know, the world and everything around us will reward us accordingly anyway. So just become your truth and so and that's where that's the beginning and that's the ending. Have faith. Wonderful. So are you living a number ten genius life today? I'd like to think I'm as I'm as close to my truth as I can be. But here's another truth. The longer you live the more of your truth reveals itself to you. So I, I, I'd like to, 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 to think that 
when I get to 70, God willing, there'll be more stuff revealed to me. When I get to 90, God willing, there'll be more stuff revealed to me. Mm. In the book, I talk, I talk about this exact area, which is what's called Realize Squared. And Realize Squared said our role, part of our reason for being, raison d'etre, is to realize what's inside of us, to seek, go look there and realize what's inside. And the second realization, now make that real. Realize, now realize. Discover, now make, now be, now make that difference. And that's what we do. So the, the, the real answer to your question, there, there, there was only ever one ten that walked on this planet 2,000 years ago. Mm. There was a 10 that walked the planet. Yeah. So that's where I've got to. There was only one 10. We were born a 10, but we all have to go on a journey. But there was one person who was born a 10, lived the 10, left the 10, and his name was Christ. The bar is set high. There you go. It's in the book. It's got the Bible. <laughs> okay. That's just brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Derek, there are there are so many areas that I would love to delve into with you, and we'll have to uh, we'll have to set up a second uh -huh. conversation because you're not only is your story remarkable, but your approach to to life and your mindset and just the way that you show up to the world every day. It's it's such an amazing example. And what I love is that you make it very clear that it is within all of us. So although we look at accolades and we look at the success that someone's had, that each and every one of us can have that. Each and every one of us can create daily standards and continue to elevate our lives. And you are a testament to that. And, and I appreciate that. What, well, there's two things. Number one, what, what is the best place for us to connect with you? Why don't you share that first? Uh, the best place is via uh, our website, um, dailystandards.com, uh, because you can then connect, you can message us and get a, a couple of free downloads and from the website, go to blogs and see previous conversations, etc. So dailystandards.com. The other way is through the book, uh, the 10 second philosophy of the book that started this, or at least became the record for, for this, and um on audible or amazon pretty much anywhere really yeah wonderful well we'll make sure that we link to those in the show notes so what one action would you ask our audience to take today that can help them live a more successful and happier life. You've shared so much in this episode, but if there was one thing that, that they could do right now, what would you ask them to do? I'd ask anyone watching or listening, just for a moment, to focus on one area of your life that you know you're unhappy with, that you know you're frustrated with, that you know has always caused you challenges and to make a decision to do a review of where your standards are in that area, not the world's or somebody else's, where your standards are in that area. And begin in this one area to review the standards and how you live and how you respond. We're not Pavlovian dogs, we're Derek, oh, they do that to me. And what's your standard response? Oh, I see. Well, well and that happened to you, Derek, you would respond that way. And you might have done in the past but that didn't serve or honor me. Now I respond like this. So what's the one area you're frustrated with that you can begin right now today, right now, latest in a few minutes time, begin to write down the one area that frustrates you the most and begin to ask the questions, what could this look like? Who and what could I be in this area? What am I accepting in this area that's not good for me, that's not honoring me? It's not allowing me to honor and serve others. What could I change? What could I let go of? What could I raise? What could I shift? And so the one new standard, as my eight-year-old daughter, she's not eight now, but she was when I wrote the book, she said, 
everything affects everything else, doesn't it, Danny? And I said, that's right. Mm. Everything affects everything else. You shift one thing, you shift other things. So it's a start, begin, and get the book because the tools are there in the book as well. Yes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And Derek, thank you so very much for being here today. I'm grateful for you. I appreciate your time and you sharing of your, your insight and your knowledge and inspiration. God bless you. Thanks very much, Jay. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you for watching and listening. I would love to hear your takeaways and feedback on this episode. So would you please subscribe and leave a comment? And to enjoy more episodes and to learn how J. Shear Business Consulting can build a solid foundation for your service-based business, visit jshearbusinessconsulting.com. And until next time, keep learning and growing, and we'll see you on the next Business Minds Coffee Chat. Take care.